Hello and welcome back to another video and in this one I'll be unboxing the AGX and showing you through the hardware as you can see it's right here I've already unboxed it there's a up there's a top view camera there and we'll switch over to that in a moment but um, this is sort of a preface I've already recorded the unboxing and this was done for a few close friends over discord so the quality is not very high and of course you can just do the unboxing only once so mm. anyways rest of the stuff will be in 4k um and i do want to thank arm um as a part of the arm innovator pro uh, project they actually sent over the agx for me to review for me to play around with so I'll have a lot more content around this hardware soon on this channel uh, and I hope all of you enjoy um, today's video and let's get right to it. Okay, let's open this bad boy up. Um, oh, it's actually the other way. <laughs> oh, it's heavy. It's like a it's, it's like a black box. It's like a shot put. Yeah. It's dense. Um okay, what am I doing wrong? You pull the flap back a bit. Yeah. The, yeah, that's this other problem. Is like I don't have a zoom lens. So. So why doesn't that auto focus on you? It's a great question. It is coming. It was. I I I just hope sometime this year I can like get a proper camera. If you, this is me doing it manually though. I know that's you doing it. I was just wondering before you did it if you had lifted it up and then slowly moved it back down, whether that would have jinxed the camera into focusing. I don't know. I like manual focus works better. All right, so this is the entire documentation bit in a nicely wrapped. Thing. Or oh, uh. Type C to email and we go through this paper. So yeah, I, I figured out. So it, it needs 90 watts and that could be in 9 volt to 20 volts. So you can have 9 volts at 10 amps or you can have um or you can have like 20 volts at 4.5 amps. So it, meaning so you can get I away can, with you can get away with 12 volts, but you will need like seven, seven and a half amps or something. But meaning that, so that sounds to me like that if I, if I, with the right B and C, I could use this on the, on the regular 3S light bulb. B, S, uh, 11.1, yeah, should be fine. Uh, wait, this, uh, yeah, 3S drops down to finish. Yeah, that should be fine. 3S would be fine. Um. Yeah, so we seem to have this. So type C to um type A female USB three. Yep, USB three. Can okay, turn that so type C to type A male. That's probably for flashing everything. It does not come pre-flashed, sadly. So that's a thing. And And the adapter is here and, and it's not the regular it, it's it's the regular Arduino not so you can use whatever off the shelf stuff you want but it's like 19 volts at 3.2 3.42 2 amps it's a bit less than nine how the yeah it's a bit less than 90 watts but should be fine since they're officially provided and your um Hard part for your app. Okay. Is it fair to say a 4S would be better? Yeah, so 
what what you end up doing is you end up adding a lot of stress to um, you end up adding a lot of stress to the cables in terms of heat uh, the more amperage you have through them so if you can use something like a 4s that means you're pushing a lot less current So this seems to be the booklet of choice uh, of getting ready guide. Uh, the support guide does not say a whole lot apart from a regular anti-static protection yada yada yada. There's there's not no nothing on the support guide of course. Everything is on this on this like brown paper thing and uh, you get your ports and everything. You get your oh. power and reset uh, combinations, your setup guide, and other stuff. So you were saying there, Saj, what you looked at when you said the support guide, that's what you looked at online, and it didn't have as much more info in the brown paper you know, booklet? So within the brown paper booklet, there's this booklet, but this booklet is pretty much useless. It's it's a support guide which basically has two pages for for language, and they just say uh, product is designed tested to meet IEC standards. Blah 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 blah. Don't 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 give it electrical shock. Don't make it on. Don't put it in a stove. Don't sit on it. You know, I'm I'm exaggerating, but that's the sort of I stuff that is here. Yeah. Um. The only useful information is AJX uh power rating. That's nine volt DC, uh ten amps to twenty volt DC, four point five amps. Yeah, I'm looking at the document speak. So this thing is basically useless. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about that? And the only that leaves you with basically something printed on a brown paper grocery bag. Uh huh. Like I love if it. if this is recycled stuff, then that booklet is based off paper. Good point. Uh, okay, so I'm just putting the peripheral stuff aside, and I'm going to put the AGX on top of the brown paper. I think it looks nice that way. There we go. Uh, plug in the adapter because that's a chore for me to get up on the other side. Plug that in. Give me a moment. So continuing on our journey. Bye bye warning label. Uh, it's a messy warning label. Could have a easy tier but it doesn't. I think about this whole thing is an easy end. Ta-da! Oh, oh, oh. oh, it's heavy. It you, you can you can feel like when you pick it up, all the weight is at this top heat sink. It's dissipating a lot of power. Whoa, sir. That's a lot. All right, so this is the AGX as you can see right here. Uh, this is the top view of it, uh, and it's all a big heatsink. Um, there's this entire width of it is the heatsink. That's the only PCB, and the main board, the main SOC board, is right on the heatsink, and we'll get to it in a bit. Uh, first of all, very obviously, we have a PCIe. PCIe X16 slot, but it's actually an X8 slot, but it also runs at uh, 4 giga, uh, Gen 4 speeds, so it's quite fast. Um, and uh, one of my intents with the AGX is to experiment with what I can add here. Um, apart from that, we have a USB Type C port, which also doubles as a flashing port to flash the board with new firmware. And then we have a dedicated USB, uh, micro USB debug port. So that's just uh, UART serial. I uh, absolutely love that. Um, and on this end, uh, we have our power jack. So this thing takes around 
um 19 volts on the adapter i think it got go up to 20 um and then we have a usb type c port over there which can do the pd um not i don't know if it does pd but it does display uh, and i think it's a full usb 3 spec so it does do display port over usb um and then we have a gigabit ethernet or sata e plus usb so this is a weird combination of slots so it has sata e port um, and I'll just get something that does do SATA E. I think I just have like a cable and I can show folks that. So here's what a SATA E cable looks like. It runs at full SATA 3 speeds and it just uh, plugs in here. However, you can also use it as a USB 2 port. So if you have a usb drive you can plug that in as well and that works um and then your hdmi port and a sd card slot at the bottom things are a lot more busy as you can see uh, this little interface here is for high bandwidth cameras i'm getting um, i'm guessing what csi and gigabit serial link can be done through that i'm not entirely sure um, and this little M.2 slot here is for Wi-Fi modules, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth modules. If you want to add your own, this thing does not come with any inbuilt Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Uh, you, you have buttons here for um, reboot, uh, I think, power, reset, and flash mode. Um, and then these headers are interesting. These are, uh, these are the power... Uh, power header so like power reset flash and another thing and then this is a generic audio header that you would find on any modern day uh, motherboard um, so you can just add those headers in there as well and you will get analog audio out as you can see it, it does not have an audio jack or a microphone jack but that header does the job uh, apart from that lot of uh, power related discrete circuits um, uh, at the back, so I'm guessing all the power handling is done through there. Tiny little JTAG connected there, unpopulated JTAG, I'm um, guessing, and an RTC battery. I'm not sure if it's a battery or if it's a super cap, but that's for RTC. Um, yeah, so let's open it up. Uh, I have opened it once before, but I won't suggest everyone doing it too often because um, the, you'll see like the connectors kind of... The connector is kind of, um, you know, fragile, although it is automotive grade, but once you look at it, you really don't want to be opening up too often. So it's open and forget once to maybe, uh, that, yeah, I'll, I'll show why you need to open it because there is something down there. And there we go. There we have our... um braces removed so like um brace and stand at an all in one i guess okay how are we supposed to do this so there you go so very carefully so these are 700 pin count connector so you don't want this to mess up um yeah these are all individual pins 700 of them and uh, these carry power and everything to the module down there that module you can't really take out from what i've seen um these are torx screws but the module is also stuck with a lot of um vacuum force when you squeeze the heat uh, heat pad or the thermal pads and it creates a lot of vacuum um, there. So if you take out the module, you risk uh, actually, um, you know, maybe damaging the chiplet. So that's not what I'm going to attempt today. Even if you Google AGX, just the bare bones uh, CPU module, compute module, um, you won't get anything that, you know, someone has taken it out. A few attempts that have been made have basically cut this thing in half and then taking it out. 
just not what I want to get into. It's an expensive piece of kit. Um, so he, there's your SSD. There's your M.2 slot for your SSD. I have a Patriot 128 gig. And the reason I have that and why it's... So technically, it shouldn't be limited to any specific um, capacity, right? But the moment you go over 512, you get SSDs with uh, chips that are on the both side of the PCB. So top side here and then the bottom side. But the clearances here are so low that you can't actually have an SSD that has chips on the bottom side. So, so you kind of need to be careful of that. Uh, I don't know if 256, uh, 512 gig is available on a single side chip, uh, chip design. Um, but definitely, um, this is an issue with um, that that limits your capacity of SSD, M.2 SSD you can put in. I'd love to see a one terabyte NVMe SSD on there, but that's just not something, um, you know, you, you can get in a single side um, configuration. So, yeah, uh, not a whole lot on this end, just your SSD and the large connector. Again, don't want to open it up too often um, if you don't have to. So uh, yeah, let's. I'll I'll just put everything back in, and uh, we'll go through some demos and see how things are going there. So I usually just give it a bit of a push. There you go, and that snaps back into place. Um, before you power on, you must secure it with your screws, um, and then hope you don't have to touch it ever again. So. Another interesting note is that this right here is a light, uh, you know, light pipe for an LED that should be right there at the bottom. So it's a bottom mounted LED. So you can see it through that hole right there. And that shines through uh, as, as a your status LED and then shines through here. So let's put all of this back together. I'll do one side first and then the other one. And there you have it, the innards of the AGX. So before I go into any form of a demo, what I wanted to put out there is that Silicon Shorted is kind of sabotaging the availability of these devices because they are made on the same line that Nvidia uses for their GPUs and that's bad news because their GPUs aren't really being produced at capacity so you know these guys take a hit and um, Nvidia just announced Orion which is the next A lineup on the AGX series it's very similar looking, they change the colors a bit, it, it's vastly more powerful. So there's a chance that when that actually hits the market, um, you, you will have these the old AGXs at a cheaper price. So take a look at, you know, monitor those prices and hopefully you can buy them. Right now they're going maybe some, uh, at, at places I'm even seeing them go for the double amount that they're actually worth.